Good morning, everyone. God bless you on this Sunday morning. On behalf of the New Beginning Church of God Sunday School Department, our Pastor Bishop Leroy Odom, our First Lady Evangelist Willa Odom, and our Sunday School Superintendent, Missionary Sabrina Morgan, we are glad that you decided to join us for another Sunday School lesson. We are in our winter quarter of the Union Gospel Series Lessons, and our main theme of study is Triumph. Our study today is found under Unit 3, Triumph Over Trials, and we are at Lesson 13, our last lesson of the quarter. It is entitled, Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias. The lesson is based in the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. The aim today, to recognize that Jesus' resurrection was physical and guarantees life to all who believe in him. The life application, what we want to think about during the course of our week as we, re we reflect on this lesson, to know the power of Jesus' resurrection by firmly trusting that he is the giver of life to those who believe in him. The biblical events of scripture take place mainly in three continents, which are Europe, Asia, and Africa. Today, our focus is on the continent of Asia which is circled here in red. Also, we have a map that indicates the Sea of Galilee, and a place of our lesson where it takes place is by the Sea of Tiberias, and another name for the Sea of Tiberias is the Sea of Galilee. So we have here circled in red the Sea of Galilee, which is the same as the Sea of Tiberias, and you'll see Tiberias circled in red also, which is a region of land right next to the sea. The events studied today are recorded in the Gospel of John, are estimated to have taken place around 30 AD, and this is after Jesus' resurrection. So you know we've been studying in the time period of 30 AD, but we've been re focusing prior to the crucifixion, but today this lesson takes place after Jesus' resurrection but we are still in 30 AD. Let us begin reading our scripture lesson text. John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 3. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Jesus appeared to his disciples several times after his resurrection. They saw, heard, and even touched him on numerous occasions. The focus of our lesson this week is on the third and final appearance to his disciples recorded in John's Gospel. At some point after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples left Jerusalem and returned home to Galilee. They were at the Sea of Tiberias, which was also called the Sea of Galilee. John records that seven disciples gathered together on this occasion, Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, which are James and John, and two other unnamed disciples. When a group of fishermen get together at a lake, it is not surprising to hear one of them say that he is going fishing, which is exactly what Peter said he was going to do. The others decided to go with him, so they got into a boat and went out to fish. They fished all night, but they did not catch anything. A story in one of the commentaries is entitled Empty Nets. It says Jesus never criticized the disciples for going fishing. Whatever their motives, fishing was a familiar activity that gave them a sense of normalcy and comfort. It gave them something to do and time to sort out their thoughts. But their efforts yielded nothing. Many times our efforts at work, parenting, or ministry leave us with only empty nets. The Lord allows us to experience lack of productivity, frustrations, 
and failure to bring us closer to him and to help us rely on him, not on our own resourcefulness. When you feel tired and empty, listen for Jesus' words to you. Rely on his strength. In his strength, we can accomplish and be successful. So let us not get frustrated when we feel a lack of productivity or things aren't going as we plan them to go, but let's just continue to rely on him. You will be successful. Practical point number one, the Lord shows himself today in a myriad of different ways. So let us not be distracted with all these different issues of life. Let's be conscientious about the issues of life and what we have to deal with. But let us not be so distracted that we miss seeing Jesus, that we miss seeing the power of God, because we need that power to operate within this world and on this journey. John 21, verses 4 through 6. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Verses 7 through 8, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. After daybreak, Jesus stood on the shore, waiting for the men to come back in. They did not recognize him yet. Perhaps it was because they were too far out to distinguish facial features, or maybe it was too foggy to see clearly. Surprised by Jesus Once again, the disciples failed to recognize Jesus. This time, the poor light gave them a good reason not to realize who he was. Perhaps they were preoccupied with fishing. Surely they weren't expecting him. Maybe they were avoiding the issue of what to do next. Are you involved in some area or activity where you think a visit from Christ would be unlikely? Guard against being so preoccupied with your own work that you miss seeing Christ. Expect that he can do the miraculous in ordinary events. Look for him throughout each day. Do not get so busy that you miss the power of God. Practical point number two. Sometimes we are so preoccupied that we do not notice the Lord standing right in front of us. Sometimes we're looking for an answer or we're looking for help, but that help is often right in front of us. We have to be able to see clearly through the storms of life. And that vision has to be a vision that's in tune with the Spirit of God so that you can see through the storms of life, so that you don't become stagnant and stuck and despondent because of what you're facing. But allow the courage within you to rise up and have that power of God working in you. And then you can continue to move forward. No fisherman who has spent a whole night fishing without catching anything wants to be asked if he caught any fish, but that is exactly what happened here. Knowing the answer to his own question, Jesus asked them if they had caught anything. When the disciples answered this unidentified figure with a no, he told them to cast their net out on the right side of the boat. With nothing to lose, they cast their nets and caught so many fish that they could not draw the net in. Practical point number three. We can confidently do what Jesus says because of who he is. So remember, Jesus has all power, speaks with authority, walks with authority. So let's align our lives with the word of God and walk within that power and in that strength. It takes faith. At this moment, the light went on in John's head as he exclaimed, It is the Lord. 
He had seen this happen before, and no one else could bring such a large catch as Jesus. As far as John was concerned, this could not be anyone else. When Peter heard this, he threw on his tunic and jumped in the water right away. Peter immediately put on his outer tunic. And when we talk about him being naked, it likely indicates he was clothed only in the undergarment suitable to his trade. So then he puts on his outer tunic and jumps into the sea and swam to shore. He could not wait to see Jesus. Peter did not allow his sin and recent failure to keep him from the Lord, and neither should we. He wanted to get to Jesus as soon as possible. So when we think about Peter's recent denials during the trials of Jesus, of how he denied knowing him, he may have still felt a particular way about that or some guilt about that. And sometimes in our lives, because of what we go through, we're not perfect individuals by far, and God knows this. And sometimes we will allow the guilt of a situation to stop us from seeking Jesus or being in tune with him, or we allow it to drag us down. We ought not let uh, situations of life or any guilt drag us down, but we have forgiveness in God, and we ought to continue to trust in him, and we all ought to continue to move forward in life and not allow our past to drag us down or to stop us from achieving and moving ahead. The others came along in the boat, dragging a net full of fish from around 200 cubits, which was about 100 yards away from the shoreline. So let's be ex as exuberant as Peter to, to see Jesus. Practical point number four, we ought to leap at any opportunity to spend time with Jesus. So when we talk about having a quiet time, having time to sit and reflect and allowing our spirits to be in tune, uh, with that righteousness, with the word of God, allowing us to our minds to be strengthened because God has blessed us with a mind, a mind that is creative, a mind that can take you places that you may not truly understand. But if you allow the power of God to work within you and allow that creative creativity of your mind to be birthed and grow, God has great things that await you. So we, we ought to take the time to meditate and reflect and, and spend that time with God and spend that time with our own selves to understand what he has placed within us and allow that creativity to grow and flourish so that we can live out what God has for us. John, the 21st chapter, verses 9 through 11. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Verses 12 through 14. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that he was risen from the dead. When the disciples reached land, there was charcoal fire already going with fresh fish being cooked over the flame along with bread. Since the fire was already made and the fish cleaned and cooking before the disciples arrived with their catch, Jesus had apparently already procured these fish on his own. Discouraged workers. Let us think about this. Tired, hungry, and frustrated, these discouraged disciples needed a lift. They lacked direction, and they were uncertain of the Lord's presence and help. Jesus came to them, made his presence known, and gave them direction. Are you discouraged in your work for the Lord? Jesus is prepared for you. He has a gracious welcome waiting. He offered the disciples a warm fire and breakfast. He also wants to give you sustenance, comfort, and fellowship. Jesus then told them to bring some of the fish they caught. So Peter went and brought in the net from the boat. It held 153 large fish. 
In spite of the great number of fish, the net was not torn. Let us consider Jesus knows. The fact that the net was not torn attested not only to the miracle, but to the attention of the miracle worker. Jesus would supply their catch of fish and would take care of their nets to see that they were not torn. Such attention to detail is characteristic of the Holy Spirit's work in circumstances in every believer's life. From these disciples who would soon begin to carry out the Great Commission to us today as we struggle through the confusion in our daily lives. So the Holy Spirit is about order and giving direction. So as we struggle sometimes through the confusion of our lives or circumstances we face, let us be mindful and prayerful and seek God for direction because the Holy Spirit is about order and giving direction. God doesn't want us to live confused lives, but sometimes confusion seek, seeps into our lives and we just have to stay prayerful and, and meditate in order to gain order back to our lives. Jesus then invited them to come eat. None of the disciples dared to ask who this was, nor did they need to. They knew it was Jesus, and Jesus fed them the fish and bread he had prepared for them. Recognizing God. Recognizing the presence of God. So when you're in tune with that spirit of God, you recognize the presence of God. You understand and recognize the characteristics of God. So as we walk in on this journey of life, let us be conscientious about the characteristics of God and allow ourselves to be placed in situations where the presence of God exists. We will always be satisfied if we will let God feed us. This can have literal application as here, but more often it will involve spiritual nourishment. Jesus is the bread of life, and we partake of him by faith. Continue to trust him. Practical point number five. The Lord's abundant provision points us to his bountiful grace. Our lesson closes with the statement that this was a third appearance of Jesus to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. Practical point six, there is no mistaking the sure testimony that Jesus rose from the dead. His resurrection, resurrecting power. We have salvation and everlasting life because of his crucifixion on the cross, dying for our sins and his resurrection. Our reflection today, the resurrected Jesus gives life to all those who trust in him. We will never run out of strength if we will rely on God's strength. Doing God's will is a guarantee of success in God's eyes. Take a moment and thank the Lord for dying for your sins and rising from the dead. Learn to trust God. Learn to act with patience and continue to walk a righteous path even in moments of distress. Through faith, let us develop patience, the patience to endure the trials of life that meet us on this journey. Let us be patient enough to see God in the storm. Let us not be choked out by preoccupations of life and distractions of life, but let us be patient enough to meditate enough to sit still enough to see God through the storms of life so that we can continue to move forward and advance in life and not be stagnated because of the issues that sometimes may bombard us or the storms that we face. But let us be patient enough to see God through that storm. As we endure, let us remember that we have victory in Jesus and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Do you believe it? That we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Trust him even in your worst hour. God's word is still true even in extreme heartbreak or when you are challenged to stand in times of facing adversity or danger. Keep your mind sharp, spirit uplifted, and walk in joy. Remember, challenges of life come to make us stronger, 
and teach us how to trust in God and rely on God's strength. Open your heart to receive the love of God. God loves you and cares for you. Stay prayerful so that you can stay in line with the leading of God. Sacrifice some time in the morning, some time in the evening, and some time during the midday and worship and praise God for all he has done. Trust God and exercise patience in waiting on his direction. As we come to a close in this last les lesson of this quarter, we thank you for joining us for another Sunday School session. Remember to be thankful to God and maintain an attitude of faith. Always honor the holiness of God. Walk by faith daily. Trust God and live triumphantly. Stay prayerful and walk in God's will. If you should falter, pray for forgiveness and get back on a righteous path in your mind, spirit, and daily walk. God will bless you and provide for you. Until next time, be blessed. <laughs>